Dr. Vikas Kohli. Welcome to the channel Kahani's Golden Bites. Thank you for taking out your time to be on the channel, Doctor. Pleasure. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, doctor, for the benefit of our viewers, may I just please request you to give a little background about yourself, uh, Doctor? So, uh, my name is Vikas Kohli, and I specialize in uh, treating children with heart disease. How did I end up with a field which is so very, very rare is an interesting fact in itself. Um, I was a little unwell as a kid myself and a doctor misdiagnosed me with a heart condition, which is not the reason I went into this field. But when I went into medicine and then I went into pediatrics and subsequently trained in PGI Chandigarh, I realized these were the kids who nobody would own up to, not cardiology, not pediatrics, they wouldn't get treated and they would get left on their own. In fact, I wanted to train in this field and started looking around and my family also discouraged me saying, you won't be able to earn enough. And obviously nobody at, as a PG thinks of how much he'll be able to earn. And that is never the agenda of becoming a doctor. So I decided I have to do this and that's how I got into this field. And uh, subsequently the rest of the story unfolded. Dr. Vikas Kohli, you know, you have chosen, like you mentioned, not a generic field. It is so sub, sub, sub segment, so to speak, you know, so specialized and so rare. It's absolutely noble. But, uh, you know, I'll dwell on that a little bit more as we go ahead, uh, doctor. Doctor, uh, you also went overseas. Where did you go uh, Doctor? So just a minute or two about how that happened. And, you know, I, the head of PGI was a cardiologist at that stage okay. and a very eminent national cardiologist. And he retired a few days before I finished my post-graduation. He was a very tough person. And um, I wanted to know from him how I can become a pediatric cardiologist because there was no training program in the country. So I just called him on the local PGI phone, internal phone network, saw his extension, called him up at his home. And my colleagues were telling me, you'll be orbiting Pluto if you go and try to meet him or call him. He's such a tough person. I was shocked. He said in a very British style, Dr. Coley, can we meet at 6 p.m. in the evening at my residence? And I was like, sure, why not? And he welcomed me in. He got me a tray of, you know, cookies and uh, tea and said, how can I help you? Please tell me. So he wrote a recommendation letter from me out of the blue. It did say that Dr. Kohli is in need of mentors and is looking for somebody who can guide him through this. So that was my beginning. And he told me very clearly, because either go to USA if you want a proper degree or go to Australia if you want another kind of degree. UK will not give you a degree, it will give you experience in this field. I said, US it shall be. And I had no clue how to go to US. Uh, I wrote to 50 of the training institutions in pediatric cardiology in 1992. I wrote to 50. I knew their criteria. And I knew I did not fulfill their criteria. I wrote to 50 of them. I remember clearly laying out 50 envelopes, getting 50 stamps, 50 photocopied letters and going and mailing them. I got 50 replies, all saying, no, we can't take you. Yes. And I said, this was expected. And I went on and they said, you have to come here, do your residency all over again, and then we can accept your application. Okay. And so I went to US, I went to New York, I got it in Bronx and I worked there. And within one week, they started labeling me as the encyclopedia guy from India. And within two months, they, <laughs> they said, can you be our chief resident, which is like a very high post. And finally, I got into uh, Miami. I trained in Jackson Memorial in Miami and uh, I was ready. Now, when I was training, at no stage, I thought I'm going to live in US. At no stage. Really? I have no wish to live there. Absolutely. Really? In fact, I have my diaries. I'm a diary writer so every day i would make notes my wife would ask me what notes are you making at the end of the day i would write how they run their peripheral clinics how they cover the remote populations how they have an integrated network of healthcare system 
what is the insurance system they have for children with heart disease which is so very different from the insurance system for children per se there's a special fund and a special bill in their part in the senate which goes through for children with heart disease every 5 or 10 years Amazing. so that's and how their hospitals function so i took down all those notes that when i go back i have to do all these things because i may forget the details and i finished my fellowship and i said hey let's try and go back to india now and i came and i met i met the top most cardiac hospitals in north india and south india they did not take me and i have been through that cycle as a pediatric cardiologist you go through that cycle very easily and many times that you were refused and i said what do you want me from me that you will accept me he says you have to be in india many people come to us from us meet us go away they never come back okay. so you convince us so i said i have to move out of us i got a job in us for oh. i worked in it for 6 months and i realized this is not my cup of tea i am just a spoke in the wheel i will not be able to make a difference to the system while kids will die in india i have to reinvent the indian wheel for indian kids and i started looking at where can i get in a large experience because this is a skill based field it is not a just a knowledge based field so i looked at the globe and i discovered country wise china has a very big program far east no country has uk has and i incidentally came across a program in saudi arabia of all the countries the king of saudi arabia had a kid who died of heart disease couldn't get him treated so he made a hospital the prince sultan cardiac center for kids and he gave it two planes airfields everything and he said any kid in the country who has heart problem airlift him bring him here this is the biggest one and he got the biggest people the first guy who did angioplasty in usa the first guy who did a ballooning a stenting all those people worked in that institution and he built that institution to very high standards i said i looked at everything critically and i said this is the place i have to work now incidentally what happens when you land from usa to saudi arabia i landed and i said let me unpack my computer i still remember very clearly i had an apple desktop the older ones which were there and i unpacked it and i said where is the net, internet connection and i connected and i said let me start looking for jobs i need to exit from this country so this is how i initiated and kind of uh, reached a platform for, from where i could launch myself and get into india so vikas you how long were you in the us uh, how you know for your studies and your fellowship uh, how how much time did you spend in the us uh, vikas i was there for seven and a half years seven and, and a half. i did the fellowship yeah fellowship and residency for seven years six uh, six months i worked in a private practice setup i still remember those checks you know uh, every 15th day on a friday afternoon the check would come in i was like do i have to multiply this and convert into rupees or even in rupees this is fine uh-huh. and uh, incidentally i must say this my family my wife truly supported me every subsequent job i changed into for the next five jobs my pay decreased but i got closer to my goal so that is the level of commitment one needs that you know that there is something very big waiting for you to happen and you need to be totally believing in yourself and then it can happen so because now you know 7 seven, seven and a half years another 16 you know a one and a half years in saudi that's a you know you were so far away not in heart not in soul but physically you were so far away from the indian healthcare system and you still had this pull this conviction to come back to india because and that was giving away a lot of money you know lucrative money and you say that five jobs you've gone for lower money please you know what is that pull what is that pull uh, vikas you shared please please if you could elaborate a little more vikas please so you know the ability i'll tell you one of the negative things of working in us as a doctor which uh, people don't talk about because majority don't come back mm. so one of the things is that you can never ever ever connect with a patient the way you would connect with your indian patient 
when in india i know my patients family i know their relations i know their background i know what they would be feeding their kid i know what they would be doing on a celebration i know everything they would be doing with their kid in us one cannot it takes a generation to connect to that level so my kid if kids if they grew up in us and became doctors that they would be able to connect but i couldn't and 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 majority cannot because of the social structure and i don't want to get too much into details of that but that's an essential element and second the most important element was what pulled me back was the ability to really make a difference and save indian human life when he came back to india so what did you do finally you got a job you did finally get a job right yeah oh. yeah i did i i met uh, some of the top cardiac surgeons and uh, i still have one uh, without any specific names i still have a appointment letter that i would be appointed as a junior resident and my pay would be 17000 rupees oh, wow. that is not decades and decades and decades back that is 1999 wow. and uh, plus 5000 rupees for house rent allowance but that would not be given to me because they would give me a one room apartment and uh, then in south india i met a, a cardiac surgeon and he said i'm opening a hospital in east india can you go there and believe it or not I was very happy to accept that because I had spent five years in Bengal, and one of the biggest regrets I had that in my tenth I had to take a written exam in Bengali as my third language, and in my whole life I couldn't understand why I was made to take a exam in written Bengali. And when this happened, it clicked to me that this is God making it happen. and my faith in god increased that there is he does everything with a purpose and because for cardiology you need to speak the language of the patient you know so i i reached calcutta and the only pa- pediatric thing in the hospital was a pediatric stethoscope and patients there was not even an iv cannula for kids in that hospital that night and we were getting kids because it was a heart hospital we were getting kids left right and center and we immediately got into action started working and you know taking care of the kids doing angioplasties and everything you you name it and everything started happening magically there but the best thing was the nurses who were working with me would ask me doctor where are you from and i was like i can't say i'm punjabi or i'm from delhi or i am from america i said i'm here yeah. do you have any question about that <laughs> and then i would speak in bengali and then there was this punjabi truck driver who was driving punjabi brought his uh, in bengal he brought his kid and i was speaking in bengali and their nurses would like we can't figure this guy out he says he's from us he's in indian and he speaks bengali and he speaks wow. punjabi what is happening here wow so so doctor from there you know you've moved you've come into the delhi ncr and you know what are you doing here what has been your journey here uh, doctor so um i obviously you know my parents were in delhi and they were getting older and there was somebody in the family uh, who was very unwell and i had to visit delhi frequently and and at that stage my parents were alone and my mother said we are twin brothers by the way and my twin brother who's a liver transplant surgeon is in us he had come here for a couple of years and he decided to go back because it didn't work out for him so i still insisted that i do want to come back and it will work out for me so um i uh, my mother told me uh, a, a quotation she said you know jungle mein mor nacha kisne dekha if you were in america or in kolkata it makes no difference it stuck me that she's alone here so then i said you know let's move on to uh, delhi and you know there is as much of a deficiency in north india and more so than in east or in south and it was a rougher ride in delhi because uh, the hospitals are bigger the egos are bigger and uh, the first hospital which i joined uh, you know a cardiologist needs a cardiac surgeon i told them very in the very beginning <clears throat> that i would need a cardiac surgeon they say you'll have to get one and i four doctors cardiac surgeons pediatric interviewed in that hospital in one year and they rejected all four and i at the end of 365 days said i am not going to function in this hospital because you don't seem to like a pediatric cardiac surgeon any one i get 
and the other doctors who were all retired doctors from aims and other fields they were like vikas where are you getting these cardiac surgeons from because there are only one or two we know but you got four year for us so that was kind of a discrepancy that happened and then finally i ended up moving to apollo in 2002 which was about four years after or uh, 2003 four years after i came back to india and i worked in apollo from 2003 uh, to 2015 and uh, then i left apollo for good and i said that uh, i'm not going to be in a corporate hospital and which is a different story in itself so uh, what are you doing currently uh, doctor at this point in time so it was in uh, 2015 i decided that uh, my specialty which is got mainly poor patients is not meant for corporate hospitals which can't compromise on the cost they charge a patient so mm-hmm. it took me that long to kind of understand the dichotomy i kept struggling and i kept seeing a lot of patients doing a lot of clinical work but it was probably only that 1 to 2% of all patients who can afford to come to a corporate hospital i started associating with few ngos and then i realized that these ngos they raise funds and then 6 months later they are still raising funds on the same patient whom i have already treated and i felt you know, something fishy there and i was not very comfortable so i said nothing doing you know we'll start our own ngo with very clean credentials and everything accountable and in 2012 i had already registered an ngo by 2015 it got really on ground and functional and that is where now i spend 30% of my time so that is what i look at as my future 100% 30% i do my clinical work 30% i do my uh, ngo work and i do various other things including 10 to 15% into self improvement but a uh, 10 to 15% work i spend in training doctors so in spite of being out of a major hospital i've established a learning system uh, on an lms online platform because this is upskilling most doctors are already working in their clinical work and they need to upskill so one of the major problems i realized was that the number of doctors who practice pediatric cardiology or deal with children with heart disease is very very small in india even today when i came back there were 5 or 10 today there are about 200 so in my lifetime it doesn't seem like there would be one doctor per district also there are 600 districts in india so we need to actually have about 25000 and that's not going to happen so easily and the learning cycle for a pediatric cardiologist is 3 years so i shortened that and made it an online platform with a very shortened course of clinically relevant things for screening purposes and that has got uh, certified by a government agency and that's the program i run and i have great that's amazing so regrets on coming to india because stupid decision i have been asked this question yeah many times and everybody who meets me two questions they ask me anybody new who meets me number one why did you come back was there a problem there and number two do you regret and i actually don't have any brain space to regret there is no scope of regret because whatever be it if you desire to create that change there is nothing that can come in your way there is absolutely nothing that can come in your way because every single change which has happened on this earth by every person who's created a change has struggled as much or more so i'm just doing what others have done in terms of the degree of struggle my struggle is not unusually more maybe i'm more comfortable also as compared to those people who struggled for other fields so Uh, and i truly believe in one particular statement and that is people fail because they dreamt small not because they failed to achieve it's because they if they dreamt big enough they would be in their cycle of achieving throughout their life and they would achieve it dr vikas kohli thank you so much for taking out your time from your busy schedule you know our viewers are going to enjoy thank you so much for sharing a little bit about your lovely life pleasure thanks a lot it's been an honor to be with you